Hey, good morning, my friends. Things are changing. We've got a lot to talk about on the morning briefing today. Man, I'll tell you, fishing in the LA Orange County area offshore wasn't that good. But oh my God, did San Diego heat up. And does that portend good things for the future here in our LA Orange County waters? Is it over here? What's going to happen next? We'll cover all of that and a lot more on the morning briefing. Good morning, everybody. Hey, it really is great to be with you here this lovely Monday morning. It's beautiful. There's no wind this morning. However, we're going to have some breezy conditions, especially as we get into Tuesday and Wednesday offshore. And that might be part of the problem. We've had some wind here recently. And of course, it makes finding kelps a lot more difficult and it reduces water temperature. And that is something we don't want to happen. Can't afford for that to happen if we expect that Dorado to hang out. Remember the other day I said to you, Maybe one day we'll wake up and they'll be gone. That's it. You missed the season. Is that what's occurring now? Well, I'm going to dig into that in a lot more detail in today's morning briefing. We're going to talk about some very poor fishing up here offshore yesterday, but some excellent fishing down in San Diego as that bite is revving up and really, really looking good. So fingers crossed that we are heading in the right direction. First of all, let me mention to you that we have two charters left this year. October 5th through the 7th. There are still openings on that two-day trip on the Pride. We keep it at 14. That's our last trip. Love for you to join us. I'll be shooting a video on board and it's always nice to go home with not only a lot of fish but a video to show all your friends and to remember your trip hopefully for a lifetime. So remember you can go in the show description and find that or you can just send me a text at 657-2276 Four five nine, and I'll pop you back a text and we'll get you signed up for that trip. And also, Sunday night, two spots left on the relentless day and a half trip. Whoa, that is going to be a good one, let me tell you. That is really starting to heat up and look really, really excellent. All right, and hey, by the way, I was out at Sand Sports at the Orange County F Fair, and that was a lot of fun seeing all those vehicles. Curious, if you don't mind putting in the comments on YouTube, would you like to see coverage on other outdoor activities like sand sports or are you all fishing all the time? I'm just asking because of course we want to broaden our coverage and we intend to do that into fresh water and everything else. But would you be interested in that kind of stuff also? If you put a comment up there, heck no, not interested fishing all the way. Yeah, I'd like you to see you cover it. That would really be awesome. Okay, let's jump into it. And let me start you out down in Ensenada where, as we've been telling you, the Pongaros down there have been catching more and more yellowfin tuna as that stuff is starting to push up the Baja coast and it looks really, really good. My friend Arnie down there from Arnie Sport Fishing, or you can find him on Facebook, Arnie Man. He's a great guy and does such a great job. You're looking at photos from recent trips as he's been hammering some big bonita, yellowtail, yellowfin tuna, dorado, all kinds of stuff. And I love talking to those guys and seeing that they're having great success because it tells me what's coming up the Baja Coast. Of course, San Diego fleet, when they're down there, they're also confirming what I'm hearing from those guys. But I'm going to tell you right now, it looks good. It looks like that fine fall fishing that Buzz Briz and I always used to talk about. And it looks like it is headed this way. You know, as we bump across the border now into Gringolandia, I'm telling you, they had over 2,000 yellowfin tuna caught down there by San Diego based boats and you throw the private boater fleet in there God knows how many it was they're not huge for the most part there's a lot of this 8 to 15 pound YFT there are fish that get up over 50 pounds but a lot of it is the smaller grade yellowfin tuna and it is flat biting and I'm telling you man it's really exciting stuff you get a sonar mark you see a big sonar mark and then a triple jig strike throw some bait they come to the corner they want to chew it is really fun stuff going on down there in SD right now as most of those guys now are headed into Mexican waters. A lot of San Diego fleet were up 
in U.S. waters, catching those 10 fish limits of Dorado here recently. But now everybody is going to make that turn and head down the coast. And the scores have been very, very impressive. I still stay with fluorocarbon. We love Opsin, as you well know, www.opsinusa.com. Put in FA at checkout, and Greg Brown will send you a love note. Make sure your wife doesn't see it. He'll send you a love note and a special gift. So we love the fluorocarbon. On this yellowfin tuna, 25 pounds working great with a 2-0 hook, a good hot bait, working really, really well. Remember, you might hit a kelp that's finicky still, so some 15, 20 pounds. Those guys down there in San Diego will kill you if you show up with 15. But sometimes it works. It's appropriate. And dropping your hook size down. Remember, it's all about the intensity of the bite. If it's super scratchy, you're seeing a bunch of flatheads and they're not biting, then you're going to go to some lighter tackle. And I admonish you all to defer to the crew on board. They know them way more than I know. They're out there every single day. So if they tell you you got a hole in your head fishing with 15 pounds and don't listen to that maniac on the beach, go with what their advice is because, as I say, I have so much admiration and respect for the crews in San Diego. So professional, do such a great job. They are on it every single day, so good stuff. How about some scores? Mustang, wide open yellowfin tuna. Excellent score on there. I had a friend, Furman. I met him and his brother, Edgar, over there at Island Fishing Tackle in Carson, California. You know, I was going over to do something with Sam De La Torre, another tutorial. Two of the nicest guys I've ever met in my life. In fact, Edgar, as I was walking through the parking lot, was almost jogging toward me. And I'm thinking, uh-oh. What's going to happen here, man? Do, did I forget to pay this guy some money or something? And he came over and he couldn't have been nicer. Made me actually feel like I was somebody watching the morning briefing every morning and so much more. But Furman was going to go on a three-day trip. He has since returned. He sent some great photos and video. Really a great trip. He said on board the Pacific Queen, raved about the crew, said they were top-notch, and they had excellent Dorado fishing. He said... They had that small yellowfin tuna, good bite on that, and a few bluefin to go along with it, but really excellent fishing as evidenced by those photos and video. Really sounded like a great trip. It just keeps going on and on and on. John Ho was on the Dolphin, and he was on a one-day trip, a trip that leaves in the morning, comes back in the afternoon or in the evening, and John had some great fishing. There he is. He's such a nice guy. Hangs out with Mimi Pham, who's a dear friend of mine, and I'll tell you, Sounds like that yellowfin is headed in the right direction. Incidentally, on the dolphin, I think it was 24 yellowfin tuna and 14 dorado. I hope I have those numbers right. I know those are pretty darn close. So really some excellent fishing going on. San Diego, another boat leaves in the morning, comes back in the evening. Three yellowfin, four yellowtail, limits of dorado. Daiwa Pacific, limits of yellowfin tuna as they are just slamming away on that fish down below right now. It's really good, and there is more coming. You get up, to those numbers, 2,000, you start seeing those numbers, that's a throwback to the good old days. Once again, really great fishing going on. They love to bite the iron, yellowfin tuna, that is. Something with chrome in it always works great on those fish. I love that Daiwa Sakana. That's a great jig to be throwing at these YFTs. The bluefin, if you roll up on a foamer, will bite that too if they're not overly finicky. It's a great way to get a bite. And then you're on the heavy. Okay, so you're fishing iron. You're fishing at least 40 pounds. It's a great way to go. And remember what I was telling you. Even though you see all that fish on the surface, you pull up and you see a bunch of yellowfin coming out of the water and they look like they're finally going to bite right now. I mean, the light switch has definitely gone on. Sink that jig down. Sometimes you'll feel them wrapping on it or sometimes you'll just feel them. They bet it. And, you know, you put it in gear wind on it and you're bit, but sink it down, give it a, you know, an eight count at least, and then wind on it fast. Yellowfin like a fast retrieve, and you're gonna have a ball, man. When they bite that jig, there's nothing like it. It is so much fun. I know you're gonna enjoy it. Old Glory, Limits of Dorado. I think I mentioned Daiwa Pacific with Limits of Yellowfin Tuna. Tremendous fishing for all the boats that are headed into Mexican waters. I got a feeling that it's game on for quite some time right now. Really excellent fishing going on down there. All right, as we move up now to what has been central for the Dorado bite, I mean, it's been absolutely wide open for so long. We had a very down day yesterday with many boats struggling and not coming up 
with much at all. So the question looms, of course, is this a down day? We have those all the time. All the time you have down days. You can't explain it sometimes. You don't know why it happened. Sometimes you can point to the wind or a drop in water temperature, but sometimes it just happens and then all of a sudden the bite is back on or it takes a hiatus for a couple of days and goes down the tubes and then starts to bite again. So that is the question we're gonna see answered in the next week. You gotta give that at least a week. Now, was there an absence of fish seen yesterday? Absolutely not. We're still seeing it. So that is a really, really good sign and an indication that more than likely it was a down day and hopefully that's exactly what we're looking at here. So Patriot, he was one of those boats who saw a lot of fish. He only had 11 Dorado though yesterday. He asked the question out loud, is this it or are we going to see this just as a down day and it comes bouncing back. El Dorado on an overnight trip, 15 on the Dorado. Enterprise had one good kelp in the morning, uh, had a couple of striped marlin come in there and freak out the Dorado, but overall, not the same kind of fishing. Day one on the Thunderbird, he had 24 Dorado, 10 Bluefin, but he had some BFT to 200 pounds as usual. Thunderbird doing really, really good. On their second day, they decided to fish San Clemente Island, and it was pretty slow. Six yellows, a few bass, and bonita. So you can hear, it's a totally different situation right now as things are in a state of flux. It's a little different. Now, is it the wind? And we do have it. And in fact, by Wednesday, it's going to be a little bit windy. Now, we have a trip leaving on the Pride. We're sold out on that trip. And Wednesday on departure, it's going to be a little bumpy. And then Thursday, the weather gets nice. And Friday, it's even nicer. And so, fingers crossed that we're going to be the ones that pop that bite back into gear. Or the other scenario is, Here's what has to happen for this to play out. We have to have warm water that extends up here. There's got to be a freeway. There's got to be some kind of a roadway for those yellowfin down below to roll up here into SoCal. And that is still viable. That still looks like a huge possibility and it could happen at any point in time. You know, those fish, if they swim three knots an hour, they're almost at 100 miles they can move in a single night swimming that slow and they go way faster than that all depends on bait there's plenty of that water temp still good and of course we need those fishies to swim up in this direction so we'll see how this all plays out today it's going to be a very interesting day however we do have the wind coming and the wind we're dealing with a little bit although it's a gorgeous day here on the beach so far we do have that and again that makes finding kelps more difficult and if it reduces water temp it can put the fish you know, in a mood where they're not all that eager to bite and chew up bait. So we'll see how that all plays out. So if you're on an LA Orange County Base boat, that admonition that I gave you earlier about bringing some lighter tackle, you definitely want to do that. However, when I say that, I'm not telling you leave your heavy stuff at home. Bring both, okay? Be prepared for both scenarios so that you can adapt to any situation that unfolds before your eyes. And that's part of the whole thing, just being prepared. If you're prepared, you can really get the job done in a much better way. All right, islands uh, down there around Todos Santos, good yellowtail fishing. And some guys are gonna start looking at that. Maybe Arnie will be taking a look at it a little bit more. Um, up there at the Coronado Islands, we still see some good yellow fishing at times there. You can fish surface iron or the fly line bait. That works really good. San Clemente Island, Thunderbird was in there and had slow fishing. It's been up and down here. Recently, there's been some really good scores on yellows and then some very slow type fishing. Some guys catching, you know, like 20 yellows now over there. But even it's like two day trips out of San Pedro and other areas, just a little bit of drought, a little bit of yellowtail. It was definitely down yesterday in the last 48 hours, let's say, have not been all that productive. It's kind of you know, stinks a little bit, not that great. And uh, so hopefully it's gonna rebound. Uh, moving you up in the Channel Islands, those guys up there still catching the occasional nice big flatty, as well as some white sea bass, flurries up there. Can't believe that's still going on, but we're still getting the occasional, mostly the rockfish biting really well. Along the coast, still catching some calico bass and sand bass, San Diego area. Moving you up the coast to um, Dana, same thing. Up there in Redondo, Redondo special been having some really great 
calico bass fishing. I think they had 108 calicos yesterday, released more than that. So the bass bite's been good. Light line, good hot bait, can't beat that. That's the way to get a bite on that. And then moving up the coast, Marina del Rey, rockfish, bass fishing, decent at times. Up there in the Channel Islands, local boats catching a few bass and a few, um, well, mostly rockfish. That's been their thing. That's another thing they do so well in the Channel Islands. Island Spirit in California, fishing local there. Out of Ventura, sport fishing. A couple of great crews on there. You're going to love those trips. And once again, don't forget, everybody, you can get a hold of Ventura Sport Fishing by dialing 805-676-3474. By the way, Tucker McCombs on board the Endeavor. Happy birthday, my friend. Tucker, I don't know if anybody works as hard as he does. He's a great guy. Watch his podcast. I'll put it on the Friedman Adventures Facebook page, and then you can hit the link and watch Tucker McCombs because He's one of a kind. His work ethic is so great, and his expertise as a captain is second to none. He is on it 24-7. Tucker, happy birthday. Many more in the future. Along the coast, still some decent Corvina fishing. Uh, natural baits are the best way to go. You're going to want to go with a sandworm, a sand crab, a ghost shrimp, something like that with really light line, six pound. A trout rod works just fine. You get up in front of those fish. How do you get up in front of them? Polarized glasses, look in the water, see them swimming in a certain direction, jog up in front of them and present your bait. That's a great way. Throwing a chrome crocodile, you can catch a couple of halibut all along the beaches here in SoCal right now. And also there's a little bit of yellowfin croaker still hanging out now. I mean, it actually feels like fall here this morning. Can feel it. It's kind of chilly this morning, actually. So we're getting that fall feel to it even though we have a few more days until it actually chronologically clicks into fall. Man, I'll tell you, you get a rebite sometimes on the nice big spot fan croaker in the surf. I can't wait to do more of that here really, really soon. All right, so we've got a big change right now. We had slower offshore fishing for LA Orange County base boats. Will it rebound today? We're watching it very, very closely, and we've got wide open fishing on that yellowfin tuna south of the border down for mostly day and a half boats but you heard john had some success there on board the dolphin and those guys are bound to catch more and more and more as the light switch is on relentless sunday night look in the show description and also two-day trip final one on board the pride out of 22nd street landing october 5th through the 7th can't wait to see you on those trips and i thank you so much for spending time with us and driving our statistics up through the roof. Big celebration when we hit 1 million views and or 5,000 subscriptions. I don't know what we're gonna do. Probably not that much, but one thing we will do is say thank you to each and every one of you. Give us a like, that really, really helps us a lot. Hit that like button. I'll see you again really, really soon. Enjoy the first day of the week here, or the second day, Monday, first day of the work week. Have a great one, and I hope to see you really, really soon.